This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It's a privilege and an honor for me um, to come and to see new faces and holy souls that are seeking for the truth. <clears throat> we are um, not appreciating ourselves enough to understand how great we are in the eyes of the Creator. Everyone are judging themselves based on their physical function, their ability to work up, wake up early enough in the mornings or how many pages we learn during the day. If we catch the first minyan, the second minyan, we're basing our self-esteem on, on how much we achieve every day when the main achievement of a person is based on his inner desire and his yearning to come closer to the Creator. Really, a person can be in prison and without his tefillin and not able to put tefillin, doesn't even know when Shabbat is, doesn't know the dates, the, all, all information and all knowledge and all tools to serve Hashem been took away from him and he will be the closest one to the Creator. Why? Because his heart is a flaming fire that desires Hashem and without Matzot in Pesach he wants to eat Matzot and without Shabbat he wants to keep Shabbat and without Tfilin he's crying to Hashem why he don't have Tfilin and for us suddenly that person becomes to be a hero. Why? Because he wants to and us that we want so much and we're barely able to function we're still hating and blaming ourselves and disrespect ourselves and judging ourselves on our weaknesses and our lackings and difficulties that we're experiencing. And all those difficulties and obstacles that we're experiencing in life are real obstacles that came to us because of the darkness, because of the exile, because of thousands of years that our ancestors, our parents went in the world from one state to the other, being chased by that enemy or another, finding ourselves today in this generation, struggling with financial issues, with peace in the houses issues, with lack of understanding, with a lack of knowledge, not knowing ourselves, not understanding our true potential, don't know what's the real purpose of life. And many rabbis and teachers that are trying to guide us and to teach us, they themselves don't really know exactly which is the right way and we're trying to catch a little bit from here and a little bit from there and trying to find the direction and falling and failing again and again and to blame ourselves for trying to walk in the middle of the darkness when the darkness is so heavy and it's so hard to know the right direction and to know exactly what to do because we're facing huge challenges even in your own house you want to be religious you want to keep Shabbat you want to eat kosher you have other people that are growing with you that are part of your life that depends on you that are counting on you that have hopes and expectations from you and they don't have the same understandings as you and you must consider their desires and their will and their ability and their power and their understanding and you must be sensitive to their needs and you cannot always run to the, right, to the direction that you feel is right. And sometimes when you do, you realize after a while that you were wrong and they were right. <laughs> so in reality, it's hard to know what's the right path, what's the right way. So how can we blame ourselves on trying so much without knowing when really the real reason why you're, we are so lost and confused is because that it's just dark outside, really. We are standing here. You're lucky to sit, but I'm standing here. <laughs> after more than 2,000 years of very rough and hard exile. And we are refugees, we are survivors of, that are here because of complete wonders and miracles. Like, there's no way in the world that you can understand how great and amazing and inspiring is the miracle that you 
are here sitting right now and listening to this class. It's like it's it's a wonder, it's divine. There's no explanation in the world that can answer what that brought you to be here right now sitting and able to lean and to listen and to have like this for those 45 minutes and like everything's okay, you can hear it. It's not simple. This, the, this small detail in your life, this one moment of your life, one evening in your life, is such a wonder. Think about your parents, what they went through, and their parents, what they went through. Which life? How many exiles from one land to the other, and running, and hiding from the police, and from the army, and from murderers, and from, and from, from savages, and from decrees, and from plagues, and fire, and water. Thousands of years that somehow that seed that today looks like you, who you are, survived fires and plagues and wars and decrees and, and death and hidden shelters and, and, and hiding in dungeons for thousands of years. We're talking about one out of a village that survived and went to the next village after another decade and over there he was also one of ten that, that made it out and then another group and like you are here and it's a miracle. Now why you're here? Why you survived? Only because for the Creator, for the, the Creator Himself, it was important that you make it to today. So that's how important you are. That's how great you are, that all those wonders took place in the life of your ancestors to bring you today, even that you're broken, even that you're lame, even that you're lazy, even that you're confused and tired and broken and poor and whatever. You are still precious in the eyes of the Creator because of your soul. Not because of your money, not because of your height, not because of your colors, not mm -hmm. because of your accent, not because of your wisdom and your knowledge. Just because the, the Creator saw something, some spark inside of you that was precious enough to save you, to redeem you, to rescue you from thousands of situations, maybe more than thousands, millions, hundreds of thousands of situations that He just literally saved your life in different generations and brought you to this moment that you're going to sit here and being able to think about your spirit, understanding new things about your soul, thinking again about the Creator, like the Rabbi said, trying to find a better way how to connect ourselves to the Creator. And that holy desire is that precious stone, that precious spark that still shines inside of you that was so important to the Creator, to save your life for that. Because in this darkness that we are at right now, in this generation, most of the people don't look for the truth, don't seek for the truth. People surrendered to that darkness, been surrendered by lusts and desires, fears and confusions and pressure and stress, and they give up. That's it. I can't do it anymore. Can't handle the pressure anymore. And we can understand them. We can relate to that. It is heavy. But with all the weight, we are not surrendering. We keep on dragging ourselves and taking our heavy bodies, carrying our scars, the physical and the emotion scars, emotional scars, again to learn, again to be inspired, to ask our questions and to doubt those things that we are not accepting and to go and search and to open our mouth in another prayer and to try to say another song from the Holy Book of Tehillim and going to consult with a rabbi, with a good friend, with someone with life experience and going and searching Asking Rabbi Google to answer all our questions again and again. Like, Chokhmah Bagoim Ta'amin, you should listen, you can believe. Why is there is wisdom over there? You can ask. Thousands of people been saved by Rabbi Google, I must tell you. Also hundreds of thousands been executed, but still thousands been saved. Asking questions and finding answers. There was one person that was searching, he was searching in, on Google, he was searching 
the most handsome person in the world and my picture came. So can you understand the joke? But that's how Hashem saved his life. You won't get it. You won't. No, come on. No, in reality that's how Hashem decided to save his life. Hashem saved his life. Print the word Sadiq on Google, you see my picture. <laughs> my wife once told me, once told me that I must be a hidden Sadiq. Why am I a hidden Sadiq? She said, because all of your righteousness is hidden. <laughs> Can't see any righteousness in you at all. <laughs> Must be a hidden tzaddik. <laughs> I can't see it. I don't know. <laughs> in reality, our life depends in, in, on a thread. And that's the way that the Creator is holding us on. And we think, oh, I'm almost falling. I'm barely making it. I'm almost not surviving. I'm falling. You're not. You're in the hands of the Creator and His unbelievable love, His unconditional love, His endless love is hovering above you and running the physical systems of your body and the emotional systems of your spirit and the spiritual systems of your soul and bringing deep understandings to your mind and giving you another chizuk and another spark of faith of emunah into your heart and giving you more energy and charging your battery for another hour, for another circle, for another day, for another month, for another weekend. And every moment He's coming. Chadashot libkarim rabai emunatecha. Every morning He's renewing our spirit with more faith with a little bit more understanding, straightening our understanding to, 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 a, to a, a, a further distance and aiming our heart to a higher purpose in life. Think about that. Think about how precious you are in the eyes of the Creator. When you disrespect yourself, when you are not appreciating who you really are from a spiritual aspect, from the important side of your soul, for how important you are in the eyes of Hashem, that His eyes are the eyes that can see and recognize the truth. When you're denying His truth, when you're contradicting His love to you on you, by that you are shutting off the light of Hashem. You're blocking the light of Hashem. Because the light of Hashem is the light that is treasured inside our bodies. It's the light of our souls. The light of the righteous ones that illuminated the world with their faith, with their knowledge, with their righteousness. What was that light all about? It's the simple light of faith that came out of people that did not surrender that were strong enough to reveal their inner holy desires to serve the Creator and to follow Him like lions and to keep His Torah and His mitzvot, the obligations and went all the way with that. And what are you doing? You're doing the best you can. You are trying. It's a fact that you are sitting right now and listening to words of Torah Words of emunah, of faith, that you are a truth seeker. What are you seeking now, if not the truth? If not another battery to charge yourself, to find a way how to serve stronger, with more meaning, with more intention, or else what are you doing? Like, I, I, I don't think that I am the most... Um, uh, uh, handsome person in the world. <laughs> In reality, you are a truth seeker, you are a holy soul, and you are trapped in a big challenge, in a very overwhelming exp life experience. But you are not surrendering, and because of that, the light of your soul is shining. I remember myself when I started doing tshuva more than 20 years ago, I would just go in the street before I even knew what Shabbat is all about, before I even knew what tzitzit is all about, before I, like in my baby steps, early beginning of my tshuva, people would call me rabbi, rabbi, I want to ask you a question. Every person with a kippah in this generation is a rabbi. <laughs> rabbi, am I wrong? Rabbi, am I wrong? Rabbi, please rabbi, tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> How many times have you been called rabbi? Every person is a rabbi. Why everyone are rabbis? Because the world is so dark. Not because that we are so shiny and so illuminating. We are small. We are tiny. Yeah. But in this darkness, 
a small candle can be so useful and so great because people are so lost. And even the small amounts of knowledge and information that you hold inside of yourself, your life experience with all the up and downs and thousands of failures and your lack of understandings and the whole huge, huge holes in, 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 in wisdom that you hold, with all of that you can be a huge guide for thousands of people to wake up. I am a person that started my process of tshuva from zero. I didn't have no understanding who Hashem is, what the Torah is all about, what's the purpose. I was very lucky to born Jewish, but I didn't felt connected to that at all. I was a soldier in the army, I learned in a secular school, I didn't keep Shabbat, was not celebrating the holidays, was not eating kosher, nothing, nothing, nothing. Then once I put filin in my bar mitzvah. It came to my understanding when I started to do tshuva that you're not just supposed to put filin for the bar mitzvah, just that from the bar mitzvah you should start putting filin. It was new for me. It was news. Whoa, really? Filin is not something only for the bar mitzvah. I thought, oh, you spend 1,500. I don't know, like you buy it for the bar mitzvah. It's a filin. You put filin in the bar mitzvah, right? That's it. Like, that's where you put them. And then you put them in the closet. <laughs> You maniach tefillin, baron, you put tefillin in the closet. You mekayem the mitzvah, you keep the mitzvah, you put them in the closet, no problem. That was our lifestyle. And out of that lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, today standing in front of you, the most, no, I'm just kidding, in front of you is standing a person that is talking faith and Torah with thousands of people every day. How can it be? Because I'm such a genius? No, trust me, I'm not. Because I'm so handsome? Yes, no, no. Why? In reality, why? Because the Creator wanted that. Because that I know about myself that I am really a baby that been kidnapped and I didn't know anything. And the Creator opened my eyes when I didn't know that He was exist at all. People would talk to me about the Torah and I would laugh. People told me, you don't know, the Torah is so amazing. It was a joke for me. Really, I was laughing, I was mocking that. I wouldn't believe. I didn't believe. It was empty for me. I couldn't recognize no godliness and no light. It didn't shine for me. The beach, my bike, my jeep, my friends, drugs. Were, oh, that was exciting. <laughs> Take me to learn Torah, to pray in the Bet Knesset. It was a punishment for me. But today, out of live the blue, the Creator decided to take me and to flip my direction and to go in an opposite direction and to make me to be who He wants me to be. And today I'm going and talking to people and people are flying to, 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 to meet me in my classes and driving for five hours to, to participate in one of those events and like, how can it be? Why? Again. Because I know so much, because I'm such a believer. No, only because that point of humility, that it's only an inner connection to reality, that I just remember where I came from. And because that I know that He Himself woke me up, and I didn't woke up because I felt like I want to be holy. I didn't. When I realized what Hashem is doing to me, I started crying in one of the days. One of my friends in the army told me, listen, you must meet a Rebetzin. She's amazing. She's holy. You must talk to her. I told him, okay, let's go. I went with my uniform from the army, with my bright blue Oakley sunrise, uh, sunglasses, with my, my spikes on my head, <laughs> and walking to the, to the Shuk Machne Yuda, the market in Jerusalem. And I'm walking with him and knocking on the door of that Rebetzin. We're getting in and she's looking at me. Come, come, please. I'm getting into her office, sitting, a nice chair, a nice, nice table, sitting. And she's telling me, do you know that in one year and a half you're going to be religious? I collapsed. <laughs> I knew she was right. I, I don't know how, but I couldn't argue with what that she said. 
I was holding a deck of like business cards or cards that was, I was playing with them. You know, like you're playing with things when you feel not comfortable. You always play with your Zippo lighter, with your cigarettes, <laughs> like you, you, uh, your car keys, your iPhone, like something you must hold. I was holding those that deck of cards that was on her table. When she told me you're gonna be religious, all those cards were all over the place. <laughs> like, oh, one second, then I'm picking my 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 lost sparks from her from her tiles. I told her, what do you mean? Like, why why are you doing that to me? <laughs> why what do you mean? She said you're gonna be religious. I told her. You mean that I'll believe more in Hashem, right? She said, no, no, black, white, religious, beard, learning Torah, yeshiva. <laughs> Told her, no, 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 please, no. She said, what can I, I, can, I can't do anything. It's like, it's the truth. I went back home. I started crying to Hashem. I cried. I told him, what are you doing to me? I was already few steps in spirituality. I was already few months into finding myself. When she came, she came into an open door. It was not like out of nowhere, but it, it struck me strong. It was very hard. I cried and I said to Hashem, why are you doing that to me? I don't want that. I didn't. I really didn't. But He did. He wanted he wanted that way. He wanted me to meet few rabbis. He wanted me to learn in certain yeshivot. He wanted me to be betrayed and stabbed by few people. He wanted me to suffer and he wanted me to enjoy. He wanted me to learn my lesson while I'm happy. And he wanted me to lesson, learn my lesson while I'm falling. He knows my journey. And he took me through that journey. He took my wife with me in that journey. And he brought kids to the world through us. And he brought and built this Muna project now that is going wide and, and, and reaching out to thousands of people. And why? I think that it's only for that reason that I mentioned. And I mentioned it many, many times in my classes. Only because that I know that he woke me up and I didn't wake up by myself. So if he woke me up and I know it because I remember exactly that, for an example, I was thinking about one thing and walking in the street and suddenly a person that I know, a friend of mine, is coming in front of me and I'm thinking about a question in my own mind and that person is coming and telling me, do you know? And he is answering my question. And I looked at him and like, what? How in the world you're answering my thoughts? But the Creator did that with His divine supervision, Hashgacha Pratit, touching my soul exactly in those points that I will feel, that I will recognize, and shown to me that He's behind those curtains, that He's alive and exists, that He's running the show, that He's making wonders and miracles. And then I start calling him. Okay, I realize there is a king to this creation. It's not an empty world like I thought it was. That I just need to find my way and to achieve and to go and my desires and to hide from my fears and the pressure. I thought that it's a game. I was scamming all of my childhood, always trying to achieve for myself and to run away from punishments and suffering. That was the empty world that I lived in. <clears throat> But when the Creator decided to open my eyes, suddenly I recognized that every situation is meaningful and that I can learn from every experience when I'm climbing, when I'm falling, when I'm rising, when I'm going down. In every situation, suddenly He's there educating me and touching my soul and hugging me and petting me and healing my wounds and taking care of my scars and helping me to continue and to grow and to learn. And that, all that amazing journey and all that developing pro process started out of zero, out of complete zero. I was not holy when He chose me and opened my eyes and I was not inspiring and I was very low. And He chose me. So from that I can understand a very simple rule that if He chooses to wake up a person, He can do it in a second. With no connection to your holiness, to your purity, to your wisdom, to your whatever. Only based on His endless love to you. And if He shown to me, 
His love. When I was completely ignorant, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, far from Torah mitzvot. I was clubbing in those days, I was dancing in clubs. I was drinking and buying drinks for everyone. And in those hours the Creator said, I want that soul close to me. I want him near me. I want him to know me. And he said it to me, I want you. Like the verse is saying, Lecha amar libi bakshu panai tamid. Your heart is a messenger of the Creator to tell you, look for me always. Your heart is calling you from within in the voice of Hashem. Your inner voice is the voice that Hashem is using to call you from within. Elai kore mi Seir, Elai kore mi Mitzrayim, Elai kore mi Edom, Elai kore mi Yerushalayim. He is calling you when you're in Edom. He is calling you when you're in Egypt. He calls you when you're in Jerusalem. I born in Jerusalem. You were born in the USA. That's your tough luck. <laughs> but he's still calling you in the voice of Bruce Springsteen. No problem. <laughs> he knows how to call you from your exile. He will call you from my exile. He will call me. He knows the voices that will talk to you. He knows exactly which keys to, to, to push to wake you up. And only because that you are precious in his eyes. So when you're hating yourself and blaming yourself and criticizing yourself on the sorrow of the exile, on the results of the war that took place in early years before your time, you misinterpret the real intention of the Creator because you are already a survivor. You're already a refugee. You're already a lighthouse in the world in a dark day. You are an amazing pillar of light that can illuminate the camp. And if you don't believe in yourself, that's your issue and on that you need to work. To understand that you are here in a mission, not because of your greatness and you don't need to desire to know greatness. Be humble and simple and shine the light of your soul. You are a kind person, just be kind. You're a funny person, just allow yourself to use your sense of humor in a funny way and not in a rude way. You have your abilities, your talents, your powers, your, your, your knowledge. You just need to share. You have your life experience, you just need to help. Who you should help? Should you open your own Facebook page and go wild on Instagram? No, you should understand that there is a creator, a supervisor that is looking on you and he already created the system. When you will start shining your light, your light will spread first of all in your house. Then in your community, in your town, in your area, in your country, in your state. And then it will grow and spread in the world. One will spread his music, one will spread his songs, one will spread his books, one his speeches, and one his, his love and his kindness. There was a person that passed away after, I don't know, being 90 years old, 80 years old, an old Jewish person passed away. He told that story in a dream to a friend of his. After he died, he came to his friend in a dream and told him that story. And he told him, when he came to heaven's court, they respected him and they opened the path for him and righteous people was standing from both sides of his path and he would go and people would cheer him and respect him and clapping their hands and he couldn't understand what's like who for me there's a joke who was i who am i i'm nothing and he kept on walking 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 and they told him welcome rabbi all those students are yours. All those amazing properties, the houses. You see that valley with all the houses and apartments. That's all yours with the springs and the lakes. Like, what in the world is going on here? He said, listen, not that I don't want it, but I don't think it's mine. They told him, are you this and that? Asked him for his name. He said, yes. Are you, were you born in this neighborhood for those parents? Yes, everything is right. Okay, so it's yours. Yours. No arguments. Go. Inherit. That's yours. Belongs to you. He said, listen, one thing for sure cannot be. You told me that all those are my students and I never gave one class in my life. 
How can you say that those are my students? He said, okay, you know what? Let's check it. Hey, you, please come over. And he's coming. What's your name? Saying his name. Who was your rabbi? That's my rabbi. And they're all blaming him on their tshuva. <laughs> and he's the one to be fault on all of their tshuva. What's going on? He said, I never saw that person. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Thank you. But like, I don't know you. Okay. Why are you calling him your rabbi? He said, one time I was standing in the line in the grocery store and people were pushing and people were arguing and that man was standing and calming everyone and relaxing and telling everyone, you don't need to push, come, take my place, you can stand, stand instead, instead of me, please. And that example that he shown me opened my eyes and only because of him I decided to do tshuva and to be a kind and nice person. Another person called to the stage, why are you calling him your rabbi? He said, one time I went to the mikveh. It was the first time of my life I went to the mikveh and I didn't know at all what I should do. And he, that person, my rabbi, he took me in and he explained to me exactly. And he taught me a right intention. And all of my life I was dipping in the mikveh with that intention. And thousands of people declared and testified on him that he was a role model and a life example example for them and he opened their eyes you don't need to be famous you don't need to be a speaker you don't need to have your own outlets on social media you don't need anything you need to be who you are and in your spot in life you should shine you should shine your kindness you should use the treasures that been treasured inside of you by the Almighty He's the one that gave you your abilities, your talents, your way with people, your power of explanation, your sense of humor, your talents, your gifts. I don't know your gifts. You know them. Even if you know how to play basketball and you think that it's not a talent and it's not a gift, I'll tell you it is. Because there are some guys that accept of someone that knows how to play with them they won't listen to no one. With all due respect, they won't listen to the rabbi, and for sure they won't listen to me. Unless the rabbi is strong in basketball. <laughs> this is something I don't know. Me, if I need to drill, you say? How do you say that? Drill. If I need to do that and run in the same time, I'm falling. <laughs> no way. To swim, I can swim. Basketball is not my gift, that's for sure. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, okay, my wife doesn't allow that, she doesn't allow me to, to, to make jokes on myself, so I'm going to spare that joke. Okay, we're going to continue with the class. I'm going to tell my wife that joke in the end of the class. It's going to be okay. In reality, the only thing that the evil inclination is trying to do with all his power is to break our self-esteem. That we will give up on meaningful life, on life of, of purpose, of having a divine purpose in life. That you will give up on your shalom bayit, on your peace in the house, that you will give up on your children, that you will give up on learning, that you will give up on praying, that you will give up on yourself, that you will give up on Hashem, that you will give up on making aliyah, on coming to the Holy Land, on crying in front of the Western Wall, kissing the holy stones of heaven. Okay, on, on those things, the Yetzara, the evil inclination, is working hard to break your self-esteem, to destroy your self-appreciation, to make a joke out of you in your own eyes. And he's using all the power in the universe, first class, millionaires and billionaires and models and famous people everyone everyone are richer than you everyone are more handsome than you except of me that I'm the most handsome person in the world but everyone are better than you are learning more than you having bigger houses than yours learning more hours holier have better wives have better husbands have better children everyone everyone are higher and you you're a lost case, you don't have no chance, you're pathetic, you're lousy, you're ugly, you're stupid, you're dumb. Why to, why to swallow all those nonsense? Why? Why to take it all in? When it's all a lie. Because you're a handmaid of Hashem. 
And if someone is talking bad things about the creation of the Creator, you need to go and fight for the respect of your father, for the respect of the Creator. There is no difference if they're mocking him or mocking me. I need to protect his honor and he needs to protect mine. And if I see that he needs to protect mine, so it means that I need to protect mine as well. I don't really want him to fight for me. And if he found it important enough to protect my back, to go and fight for me, so I need to understand that there is something good in me. And if the Creator himself is calling you my child, and if the Creator himself is telling you I love you, and you're the chosen one, and I care about you, and the Creator is saying on the verse that He's calling us, Amiata, you're my people, the, the Chachamim, the wise people, explain to us the meaning of that verse. Instead of saying, you are my people, you should say, you are with me, in me, bimchitzati, in my side. Hashem is telling us, you and I are one thing. One thing. And if you say to yourself, but I'm not Jewish, oh, he's talking about Am Israel. I have thousands of followers that are non-Jews. They're not Jewish, they're not Jewish. But I'll tell you, holy tribes, have you heard about them? Am Israel is built from 12 holy tribes. Jewish are only one tribe. Into that group of one out of 12, joined few Kohanim, few Leviim, few people that joined us from different tribes but mainly mostly our tribe is built out of Jewish the children of Yehuda that he was one of the tribes in the Holocaust six millions of our brothers and sisters been killed today we are something like let's say Hashem will bless us all more than 15 million people if the Holocaust that took place more than 70 years ago would not happen today, we would have been something like 30 to 40 million people, something like that. That is a number that also been reduced by earlier decrees that happened by the church and by the Islam and by many, many people that attacked us during earlier generations and cut our nation in half and in half and in half and in half. And today we were supposed to be realistically something like 50, 60, 80 million people. That's one tribe. The lost souls of the rest of the tribes are holding hundreds on hundreds of millions of people that you today cannot recognize because they blend into the nations. And when the spirit of Mashiach will wake up those souls, those spirits, you can't imagine the revolution and the change that will take place in the world. Today you think you have enemies, but you cannot recognize your siblings in front of your eyes. They're going to fight for you in every war. They're going to stand by your side in every way of life. That they will provide all your needs and going to fight for you. Going to protect you. Going to inspire you. You're going to be their teacher. You're going to be their guide. You that kept the Torah and the mitzvot, that you're until today is holding the holy torch, the flaming fire of the eternal Torah, they will admire you and going to follow you to the sea, to the desert, behind the mountains of darkness. They will sacrifice themselves for you out of an endless love, out of complete appreciation. And that's the love of my students to me. Because they see in me a person that is opening the doors of tshuva for them. You're welcome, I'm telling them. You can be who you are, the Creator. He loves you no matter who you are. You don't need to change. You just need to work on yourself to open the gates of your spirit to shine because you don't know who you are, how holy and amazing you are. Because as long as you listen to the criticism and to the negative voices that are destroying your self-esteem, you are too scared to be that angel that you've been created to be. That you've been created by the Creator to be. 
You don't know who you are. You think that you're short, you think that you're low, you think that you're lack, you think that you're tired, and you are not. You are a portion of heaven, chelek eloka mimal. A portion of heaven, a portion of godliness. Can you understand the meaning of those verses that are telling you, Betoch ami anochi yoshavet, that the Creator lives inside of His people. Asuli mikdash veshachanti betocham, built a temple and I live inside of you. Inside of you. That's your soul. Neshama shenatata bi tehora, the soul that you put inside of me is pure. Even a sinner that sinned 120 complete years of his life. And in the last day of his life, he's open a sitter and he wants to read. He will say, Elokai, my God, the soul that you put inside of me is pure. Pure? You impured every particle of your life. You sinned 120 years of your life. You messed up in every situation. You failed all of your beloved ones. And you dare to call your soul pure? How can you do that? Because your soul is divine. And the one that disappointed everyone, the one that failed, was your body. Your vehicle wasn't you. When a person passed away from this world, you're not going to keep on talking to his body. You're going to talk to heaven. Why? Because he is not there anymore. He's over there. He's up there. Because you are your soul and you're not your body. And this is something that no rabbi in the world can teach you. I can inspire you today to take a look at yourselves. But that lesson is your life lesson. You should learn it about yourself. You should go and search for the truth of your soul and to understand who you really are. And not to fall into that trap of evil inclination that is judging and criticizing and measuring you on every step. You're not learning. You're not waking up. Look again, you failed. What are you doing? You're in prison. Your hands are tied behind your back. You don't know how far you are still from your true potential. Your true potential is to have wings, to be able to fly, is to fulfill all your dreams, that all your prayers will be answered. And it depends only in one thing, in your faith in yourself. And your faith in yourself not depends in how successful you were. It depends in your understanding of how much the Creator loves you. An unconditional love. Without Him, for sure you're zero. But when He's here, and He really loves you, it makes you very important. If you have Him on your side, when He said, that you're going to be with Him on His side, when you're going to realize that, you're going to understand how great you are. The Or Chaim HaKadosh explained the verse, if you're going to see the animal of your brother that went lost, the Or HaChaim HaKadosh explained that the animal of your brother is Am Israel. Those are the souls of Israel. Not only the Jewish souls, the souls of all of Am Israel. That they went lost. That that lost their owner. Who is their owner? Achicha, your brother. You should bring them back to him. To who? To your brother. The Creator called himself your brother. Brothers are equal. Brothers are equal. He put you in that place. You haven't put yourself in that place. You're not claiming to be equal. He defined you as equal with your godly soul. Like Moses, the man of God. Like Abram, the man of God. That they were not regular people. Because they chose Him. How they chose Him? By listening to their own souls. Reconnecting yourself from within. Through your inner channel to the Creator. That's the way. Not to follow people. Not to follow opinions. 
not to try to satisfy and fulfill your obligation to every person that tries to guide you and control your life. Learn from the wise, only if they are really wise. Learn from the holy, not those ones that are claiming to be holy. From those ones that holiness is shining from them. And if you find it hard to find, so keep on searching. And in the place there is, uh, there is no man to find, you should be that man. If there is no one there, you should be that light. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. And that's exactly why we are trying to establish our communities and to spread words of faith between all of our surroundings and our beloved ones. That they will wake up. That they will grow like flowers. That they will bloom in the spring of their lives. You don't need to change them. You don't need to pull them. You don't need to force them. You need to open and to offer and to suggest and to allow them. I'm keeping Shabbat only because I want to. I can swear on that to you. Not because I owe anything to no one. I'm doing it only because I want to. I'm eating kosher food only because I want to. I don't feel obligated to no rule system. You can tell me I am obligated, but I'll tell you the truth about myself. I'm doing it only out of my good will. I have a good will inside of me. Because in the beginning, when Hashem opened my eyes, I didn't want those things. But when He did, and I realized that He is really life and exist. I chose Him. I chose life. And I'm still following that decision out of my inner will and my holy desire. That it's a natural desire. It's not my achievement in Avodat Hashem. That's who I am. In the beginning I didn't remember that. We fell into the darkness of forgetfulness. Don't know anything about ourselves. You don't know yet who you are. You should listen to your inner voice. You should talk to yourself. You should do simple conversations with yourself. Ask yourself, who am I? What am I doing here? Don't be scared to ask. The answers will surprise you. You're going to find a good friend that lives inside of you. An honest a pure and righteous person with good intentions that messed up many times, that failed, that lost in many battles, doesn't make him bad, doesn't make him lousy to hate and to judge and to criticize. A good person lives inside of you. Let him be. Thank you very much. Chazak Now, Rabbi, can take my tzitzit, I'll take your jacket. <laughs> <laughs> you have an extra jacket. Well, I don't have an extra tzitzit, so... <laughs> I have tzitzit, it's just flipped around. <laughs> Emuna Project is a non-profit organization. We're asking for your support, please. We're crossing the country now, went out from New York. Our destiny is going through Atlanta and Texas and um, many, many states on the way, Arizona. California, Los Angeles, San Francisco. On the way back, we're going to travel also Indiana and more, like you know more the states more than I do, <laughs> and back to New York. Please help us, and you can also check and enjoy all of our content online, social media, um, all over the place. Thank you very much, Meshem. Bless you and make you happy to believe in yourselves and to enjoy your talents and your spirits. Amen. Can you also? Thank you. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.